Hey, what's up guys? It's been a minute since I made my last video on YouTube and it seems like around every time this year, from spring to the end of summer, I seem to be gone for a hiatus of six to eight months, normally because either work gets busy or I'm preoccupied with something else. I thought this would be a perfect time to make an update video of my freelance journey so far. Uh, so far, it's been two years. And I just wanted to share some of my greatest growing pains going into my third year of freelancing. Very early on, I knew that it was really important for myself to get up to speed and educate myself. I just didn't really know how much or how long it would take to get to a proficient enough level to start charging. And I spent a lot of my time in the first year and a half of freelancing, not only learning the technical skills of photo and video, but also the business aspect of it. It was definitely more out of my comfort zone in learning how to create an invoice or how to create an estimate for a client and how to price out projects properly. As well, I also learned a little bit about basic marketing and how I should be marketing my services. I did put a little effort into that at the very beginning, but it just wasn't working so well for me. And a large part was probably because it just takes a lot of time and effort in posting and I didn't particularly enjoy doing the work. But once you reach a point where you have a steady stream of referrals, it becomes a little easier to ease off on the marketing. When I do settle in on what I want to be known for as a photographer or specialize in, I think it's also going to be time to revisit marketing myself again. I feel like sometimes I run in circles where I forget that you don't need the best equipment to get started. Let's repeat that over and over because it seems to always creep up. And I've definitely been guilty of using the excuse of not having the right gear to not pursue a project. But I always feel the need to remind myself that past a certain point, all these extra purchases become a little bit extraneous and aren't completely necessary because it's not bringing in the money. It's definitely a mindset shift that I had to transition from a hobbyist to a professional in knowing really what I need for a shoot versus what I want. One of the things that helped me the most when I was starting out was actually being able to work alongside other photographers and videographers and see how they work. And this is not as simple as to say, I wanna work with another photographer, so they'll wanna work with me. You really have to demonstrate your interest in your work, your knowledge, and kind of your passion for whatever you want to learn. And you really have to demonstrate this to those around you. If you're lucky, then you might have an opportunity for a job that a photographer or videographer might toss on to you to see if you can handle or ask you to come out for a photo assistant gig, which is also a great learning experience. I'd highly recommend you take that opportunity so long as you believe that that project will be mutually beneficial for the both of you. And if you do get a project referred to you that you put your best foot forward and deliver the best work you possibly can. Of course, being very professional and courteous with your interactions as well. So that in the future, if there are more opportunities, then you'll be the first person that they think of. In starting out, it definitely takes a little bit of investing on some of the equipment depending on the type of work you want to take on and sometimes a project opportunity comes up where you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle and you might have to either borrow equipment or purchase it outright or you can rent it. I really had to think about whether or not this piece of equipment would be useful in future jobs and whether that would help me earn more money later on. And it's a little bit tricky if the client hasn't actually booked in with you or you haven't secured a deposit, which means you're kind of buying the piece of equipment on the promise that there might be work. And in this scenario, I think you have to make a judgment call on whether or not this piece of equipment might be useful for other projects, even if this project falls through. If it's a more specialized piece of equipment, I'd find it a lot more difficult to justify the purchase and might consider renting if I can. And something that I'm still learning and still have to practice myself today is if there's a piece of work that you don't have existing in your portfolio where in the future you potentially want to do that type of work with, then it's gonna have to come out of your pocket and you're gonna be spending your own time, resources, and your effort. I think that for me, it's important to remember that there's also 
personal projects or other types of projects that I want to work on as well. And if I really do want to be working in a specific type of photography, then I'm going to have to take some time to put together that work and push my work forward. Otherwise, it's going to be near impossible to get that type of work trying to branch out in the future. So it's definitely something to look out for if you want to do something different than you're already doing. That's all there is for this week's video. If you guys found this video helpful, be sure to hit the thumbs up. And I'm going to be trying to post weekly videos once again. So if you're interested in this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in next week's video. Take care and have a nice day. Blah, 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 blah.